Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Tech, and in today's video what we have here is we have the brand new iPad OS 15 running on an iPad. So in this video what we're going to do is we are going to dive right in and look at all the new features that iPad OS 15 brings to the table for iPad owners. Let's get started. Now the very first thing that I want to talk about that's probably the most important is the fact that you can now add widgets onto your screen, okay? So you can see we have a bunch of widgets just sitting on the screen together with all the applications. So basically what you do is you press and hold on the screen, everything starts to wiggle, on the top you got the plus sign, you tap on plus, and then you can access all the available widgets right from here. You can go from suggestions, smart stack, app store, batteries, once you're in a particular widget you can swipe over to pick different styles, and finally if you grab one of these guys, you can simply dump it onto the screen as you can see. Okay, so now we have the widget view on the screen, which is great. I'm sure a lot of iPad owners are going to love this feature. Now on top of that, what we have, we also have the app library that trickled on from the iPhone to the iPad. So if I go all the way to the edge of my iPad, I now have the app library and I have all the applications automatically and intel intelligently uh, organized right over here. And one thing I'll let you know, now that you have the app library, you do have the ability to press and hold right here and delete certain pages. So by simply emptying those pages, remove from home screen, remove from home screen. So that's gonna make sure that I have less and less uh, applications cluttering my home screen, clean that up and have everything in my app library. And of course that app library also is going to be accessible from the bottom corner here. It's always gonna be here. If you click here, it goes straight into your app library on the new iPad. So that's fantastic. Now let's move on and talk about some of the new things when it comes to multitasking. So for example, let me launch an application like the notes application. And what I'm gonna do is let me just uh, tap over here. And what I can do now to activate multitasking in many apps is tap right here. And that gives me a multitasking window, all right? So from here, I can do a split screen, slide over, or just remain in full screen. If I tap on slide over, I'm sorry, if I tap on split screen, which I just did, let me go back here, tap on that middle split screen icon. It is gonna go to the side and it's gonna allow me to pick another application right from here, which is gonna directly give me the split screen view. Now the other thing is the slide over. So if I tap on this guy right here, and if I tap over here, look, it goes to the side, but now when I launch another application, let's just launch uh, uh, the home application. Now what's gonna happen is, let me just, uh, not now, okay. This comes up as a slide over view, and then this comes over here as a full screen application. So that is great as well. Now one more thing with the multitasking is something known as a center window view. So if I, again, let me just start a split screen real quick. Okay, let's just go with the notes. What I can do now is if I go over here, I can press and hold on that email and I can read that email by tapping on open in a new window. And now I have a center screen view. I can read the email, still have my split screen layout in the back. When I'm done, I tap on done and I move on. So that's another new feature with the new multitasking capabilities. And one more thing, if I'm in the app switcher screen, for example, right here, okay, what I can do now is I can merge two applications together to create a split screen view. So grab this guy, bring it over here. So they, they don't work together, but let's do it this way. Let me grab this guy, bring it here. And as you can see, if it's compatible, it is gonna create a split screen view when I go like this. Now when I launch it, uh, let me just go back here. Let me just launch this. I have already a split screen, so I can actually activate that from here under any of the active windows as long as they're compatible. Now another great feature is known as the quick note feature. So basically you can do this with your pencil or your finger. Let me just use the pencil from the corner. All you do is swipe upwards and it brings up a little quick note window onto which you can start taking notes immediately. And when you're done, uh, you can actually swipe it away. Okay, so that's for taking notes quickly. When you swipe it away, it actually uh, hides right here. I can always bring it back up and continue using it. Right now I have the pen, so it is taking the pen input, but you can do the same thing with your finger. When you're done, you click on done and it gets saved into your notes. Now, here's another great thing. 
If I was in Safari, for example, okay, let me just pull this down. Let's say I was researching something. I can quickly jot down notes the same way, swipe up from the corner. Let me just do it with the pen. It's going to bring up the quick note and I can do some research note taking on this notes application by doing using this as a reference. And I can do that with any application. Okay. When you're done, you click on done. Or if you want to just put the, the put this to the side, you can continue doing your things and then bring it back up when you are in fact ready. So that's the brand new quick note application. Okay, so talking about the notes application, let me show you what's new with that as well. So if I launch a notes application, now I have the capability to go inside a note. And what I can do is I can add tags to that note, unlimited amount of tags, okay? So let me just give you an example, X, Y, Z. We're just gonna say X, Y, Z. Let's add one more tag. Let's just say uh, W, E, R, okay? So now we have two tags saved in the notes. So when I'm outside, I can go and search using the tags. So if I go for W, E, R, now it is gonna match with that. Now when I type in X, Y, Z, uh, it is gonna search for that note using tags. When I click on it, you can see, we can see the match right there. So you can add tags to any note. You can do it anywhere in the note, and then you can use that to search the note. So that's another great way to organize your notes uh, and stuff like that. Now, one thing we have a highly intelligent feature that I'm really loving here is uh, if I go into my photos, which should be here, right here, let's say I have anything here that has text on it. It could be in the classroom, you took a photo of the actual board on which the teacher was writing, or you just took a photo of a book or whatever. What you can do now is you can zoom in or you can do it like this. It's up to you. You can press and hold and simply select any text on any photo in any context. You can copy that text. You can then go over to your notes and you can actually paste. So I was able to extract the text from any photo and convert it over to a notes application. So that's another great new feature. Now we also have an update to the Safari. So Safari is being redesigned. So let me launch the application. And what you're gonna quickly notice is on the top, we have the tabs that look different now. So we have the current window right here. It says google.com. I can actually uh, edit it from right here. I can search right from here, which is fantastic. Uh, but if I go back, I have these other tabs I can switch over to, as you can see, and they expand and show up right here. I can tap this again. It also changes colors of that tag automatically based on the website. So if I go back here, I get the white. Of course, I have access to this menu right here. From here, I can access certain settings for that specific tab, and I can start a search right under this tab. I can search for anything from the actual tab. So that makes things a little bit more clean. Now, one more thing with Safari is the fact that you can now use extensions that you're able to use on your Mac over here as well. Now, usually it should be somewhere in here, but as of now, it looks like it's not ready, not a big deal, but you can now access, uh, have extensions on the Safari on your iPad with our iPad OS 15. Now, we also have the brand new focus mode. You can access it right from here. So if I press and hold on this one, uh, it used to be do not disturb, but now when I you know press and hold it, do not disturb is still here that I can use, but I can also now do uh, th this whole thing about staying focused on what's important, which is known as the focus mode. Again, if I go into my uh, settings, and if I go up over here, you'll notice that I have that focus right here, replace, it replaces do not disturb, but this area basically allows you to set up certain focus modes. So if you're at work, you can activate the work focus mode. If you're uh, doing something personal, you can activate the personal uh, focus mode. If I click on it, it tells you what you can do. You can silence certain notifications. Uh, don't miss out on important notifications. You can configure all that stuff. And of course, you'll be able to share your status so other people know if they're trying to contact you that you are right now focused. Or if I click on plus, you can be uh, working out. So you can have, you have you have a fitness focus mode. And the great part is if somebody tries to contact you, you can let them know that you are currently working out. So that's why you're not able to respond. 
and also stay focused on your task. So that's the new focus mode. We also have update to the new translate feature. So if I bring this down, let me just search for translate. So we have the translate application. Now we have some brand new options. It says it right here. Welcome to translate. We have the conversation mode. We have the own device mode. This is really good because this makes translation process much faster and very private because everything happens on your own the device. The translation happens on the device if you download the languages. So everything's gonna be faster and private. And of course we have the, let me just tap on not now. We have the conversation mode. You can pick the language to, from, and you can start you know, using your, let, let's see. Hello, how are you? So that's the conversation mode. You can actually talk to somebody. They can talk back. You can talk to them. You get live uh, translation. And we do have the new Maps application that's going to have even more settings in there. So let me launch the application. First and foremost, it's going to be even more detailed. So they're going to add new details to this. Everything's going to look much more cooler in depth. And there's going to be new ways to navigate and explore the world. Enhanced details in certain cities, commercial districts, and stuff like that. And there's going to be a brand new uh, nighttime mode that I have not able, been able to activate. But uh, there's going to be updates here and there. And of course, we have other updates here and there. We have update to privacy, to Siri. Now, Siri is going to be much faster. So let me see. What's the weather like in New York? So the, so the response of, of Siri is going to be faster, and the reason it's going to be faster is, let me try to get rid of that, uh, is because things are happening on the device. It's called on-device intelligence. Everything is that they can do is happening on the device. It's not traveling to the cloud to get processed and then come back. It happens right here, so it is, in fact, faster we have some new accessibility features and so on and so forth. But overall, it's a nice, productive update for the iPad. iPad OS 15, any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. And for now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right?